Well, another beautiful day out here in the red pine forest. Gonna go ahead and uh, keep thinning some of these trees. My goal in here, because this bush has never been thinned, it's about a 35 year old red pine plantation. Because it's never been thinned, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do some row thinning. Basically, if you were to look at these trees, if I walk down this existing trail, you'll start to see a bit of a row formation. You can really see down there. So you can see they're, they look like they've been planted. It's because they have. So row thinning involves going through and cutting the row. So an entire row of trees, every so many rows long. What I'm doing is I'm doing a three row thin. So what that means is if I was starting at this row, so you can imagine a straight line down this row. If this was a cut row, it means I'm going to cut every tree in this row. And then the next three rows, so one, two, and three. So here's the third row. Those next three rows get left. And then I cut the fourth row. So basically I'm cutting the first row, fourth row, count three, right? Five, six, seven, cut the eighth row, nine, 10, 11, leave, cut the 12th row, etc. So three rows will be left in between each cut row. What that's gonna allow me to do is get access in between the stand, in between the stand of trees to get those logs out of here and also open up the canopy. So you can see it's pretty sunny today, but not a lot of sunlight is making its way to the forest floor. What that ends up doing is it restricts the amount of competition these red pines have to smaller trees, younger deciduous trees, younger uh, vegetation, whatever it might be, uh, shrubs, um, you know, even, even small grasses. So by having such a closed in canopy, it eliminates the competition these red pines have, which are good for them, but not so good for creating a sort of a mixed, a mixed uh, species forest. So we're gonna open up the canopy a bit. That will also help the leftover red pines to grow. So it'll give them more access to sunlight, less competition for resources. And ultimately the goal is to, to leave trees behind that will grow bigger. Because at this point in time, <clears throat> if we just take a little walk in between the uh, in between the rows here, you're noticing a lot of really small trees. So like these three, four, five, whatever, this tree, this tree, this tree, this tree. They're not very big trees and they never will be. If we look up at the canopy, they're being squished. So they're they're fighting for sunlight, they're fighting for resources, but they'll never be available to them because there's just too many trees in a small area. So going ahead, thin out some of these rows. Hopefully down the road, what I hope to get is some hardwoods moving in. So you can see this one here, this one here, this one there, small one here. By getting those hardwoods in here, I hope to eventually have this become a mixed, uh, probably a mixed hardwood bush. Maybe not in my lifetime, but uh, yeah, at least get some more diversity in here. Start to have a little more, uh, little more trees, a little more species, plants, animals, etc. So uh, yeah, so that's the goal. Gonna go go ahead, fire up the chainsaw. Got the Husky 555 today. Got the snowmobile set up. We can go have a look at. Well, here's the setup for when I'm out in bush cutting trees. So got the uh, the Skidoo, this is 2003, the Grand Touring with the 550 fan. Nice unit, Grand Touring gives me a bit more space. It's got the long track. That extra space I use for this little box I made that holds a bunch of stuff. Today we got, uh, got some rope. I've come along today, just in case I got some back leaning trees I need to uh, I need to upright. Um, as I said, you got the Husky here, the 555. This box allows me to have it have it sit there without wobbling around and getting caught on branches and everything as I'm going through. Um, I also got this milk crate I bolted to the box, and this this stores some extra stuff. Oh, my gloves for inevitably when my hands get wet. My little hatchet I use for uh, for hammering in the wedges. A selection of wedges down in there. I always like to use the uh, these are cheap ones but I like to use uh, sort of a plastic type wedge in case my my chain ever hits it when I'm sawn. Got my uh, got my bar oil here. I always make sure in the cold days. Today's I think about negative 10 Celsius. 
use the fall and the winter grade bar oil. And uh, got my uh, got my fuel. I use 50 to 1 mix in here. That's what it calls for. Seems to run pretty good. As I mentioned, I got the 555 here. This uh, this saw is pretty nice to use. It's it's got the auto tune, which basically means it will adjust itself for the temperature, humidity in the air, quality of fuel. At least that's what they say. So I've cut a lot of trees with this. This thing's a pretty good unit. So I'm gonna fire her up, give her a whirl today. My goal is um, basically I'm gonna start up there. You can see I've got some rows marked. I'm gonna take out. I'm gonna start up there and start at the far end. So at the uh, sort of the perimeter of the of the forest at this end of the perimeter and I want all the trees to fall away from me so that they sort of stack on top of each other so when I get the tractor in here I can back up to them and pull them all out this direction and back up that way where I'm going to have a bit of a landing so that's the goal today and uh yeah we'll see how it goes
So I just left a bit of holding wood to help guide her down and then I'm out of here. Perfect. too bad of a go here today so just one one straggler one got hot up one got caught up in the uh, in the canopy there so that's a leaner so I'll just pull that down with the tractor besides that though the rest of them they all they all formed a nice neat row and uh, got some room now I can get the machine in there and haul them out and it gives lots of sunlight and room for these ones on the border rows to uh, to grow bigger anyways on to the next one